Okay, improper integrals part two. Let's just do some a few examples with improper uh, integrals. So let's start by looking at the first problem in your notes. Uh, we're going from negative infinity to infinity e to the 2x. So when we have a problem like this, we're going to have to break this integral up into two separate parts. So we're going to um, integrate from b. And I can choose any number between negative infinity and, and infinity, so I choose 0 because that will be easy. And I'm looking at the limit as b approaches negative infinity of e to the 2x, plus the integral from 0 to a. And this will be the limit, I'm sorry, the limit as x approaches positive infinity. And now I just really kind of messed that up, didn't I? Let me give you some room, more room here. So this is the limit as a approaches positive infinity of 0 to a e to the 2x dx. Okay? So we integrate this like we would normally. Um, so the integral of e to the 2x, we have to use u substitution, so we let u equal to 2x. So we, ended up, we end up with the limit as b approaches negative infinity of 1 half e to the 2x evaluated from b to 0 plus the limit as a approaches infinity of 1 half e to the 2x evaluated from 0 to a. So substituting we get the limit as b approaches negative infinity of 1 half e to the um, 0 minus 1 half e to the 2b plus the limit as a approaches infinity of 1 half e to the 2a plus 1 half e to the 0. And I guess this should be 1 half e to the 0 here as well. Sorry. All right. So we know e to the 0 is 1. So this will give me 1. Now, as this goes towards negative infinity, you have to think about this. I'm plugging a negative number in for b. I'm evaluating this for a negative number. So I have to look at this like 1 over um, 1 half e to the 2b as b goes towards positive infinity. And as b goes towards positive infinity, then that would go to 0. What I would have here is, um, again, 1 half e to the 0 is just 1 half. However, since this is going to positive infinity, as a gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this just goes towards infinity. So I have 1 uh, plus infinity plus a half. And because infinity, of course, is just magnitudes larger than one and a half, it goes towards infinity, and therefore we say the whole thing diverges. Let's try the second example. Um, now remember, we have to use everything that we've learned before. So since this is rational, I may have to use partial fractions. So let's go ahead and um, factor this. And this would give me x minus 1, x minus 3. And I'm just going to go ahead and find a and b, um, just kind of ignoring the um, improper integral there for a second. So this is x minus 1 plus b over x minus 3, multiplying by the least common denominator. I get 2 is equal to a times x minus 3 plus b times x minus 1. And doing my little inventive math, I make x equals 3, so I get 2 is equal to 3 minus 1 is 2, so 2b. So b is equal to 1. And then I do x is equal to 1, and that will zero that out, and I get um, 2 is equal to 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, so I get negative 2a. So a is equal to negative 1. So now I am integrating. I am taking the limit as b approaches negative infinity 
and I'm integrating from B to 0 of 2 over, let's see, uh, let's see, no, it's, it's not 2, sorry. Um, let's see, A is negative 1, so I have negative 1 over X minus 1 plus 1 over X minus 3. Okay, integrating this, I get the limit, I get the limit as B approaches negative infinity of the natural log, negative, natural log of X minus 1 evaluated from B to 0 plus the natural log of X minus 3 evaluate it from B to zero. Okay? Now, one of the things I notice here, if I were to uh, evaluate this at zero as it is, I'm going to get a negative number. I'm going to get zero minus three, which is negative, or zero minus one, which is negative. So let me rewrite this using my properties of log, and I'll call it x minus three over x minus one and I'm evaluating this from B to zero, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So now when I, plot, when I evaluate this at zero, I get negative three over negative one, which is positive three. So that becomes the natural log of three. Minus the limit as B approaches negative infinity of X minus 3 over X minus 1. Well, let me just go ahead and put this as B minus 3, B minus 1. Now, as this goes towards infinity, I can use L'Hopital or I could use dominance of the lead term. Because as this goes towards infinity and this goes towards infinity, they're going at the same rate. So as this goes towards infinity, this entire thing becomes 1, or even as it goes towards negative infinity, because I end up with negative infinity over negative infinity, so the whole thing looks like 1. So this, the limit as B approaches negative infinity, becomes natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 1. And the natural log of 1 is 0, so my answer is natural log of 3, and we say this converge, because it's a constant. Alrighty. We have two more examples to do. For this one, we have x times the natural log of x. We're going from 1 to infinity. We always want to try to do, use substitution, which in this case doesn't work. So I think we're going to have to do integration by parts. Yay! So this is a great review of everything we've learned. So if we do integration by parts, first of all, I have to do the limit as b approaches infinity. Integral from 1 to b x natural log of x dx. Um, hmm. So if I want to use u substitution, I would let u equal to x du, because we do i late. So we do integration. So maybe I should let u equal to the natural log of x if I use i late. That's a little bit easier. So um, using I late, I let u equal to the natural log of x. du is equal to 1 over x. dv is equal to x dx. And v is equal to 1 half x squared. So I do uv, so I have the natural log of x times 1 half x squared. I'm going to write that differently. So I'm going to have 1 half x squared natural log of x minus the integral of v, pull out that 1 half, du. Okay, so I have 1 half x squared natural log of x minus 1 half, um, that simplifies to x. And the integral of x is uh, 1 half x squared. 
because that simplifies. If I simplify that, I get simply x. And then the integral of x is 1 half x squared. So I have the limit as b approaches infinity of um, 1 half x squared, natural log of x. And I'm evaluating this from 1 to b. 1 half x squared natural log of x minus 1 fourth x squared from 1 to b. Now, we're going to have to do a little bit of kind of, not inventive math, but we're going to have to be very careful how we do this. Let me go ahead and factor. Notice that both of these have an x squared. So I'm going to factor out an x squared, and I get the limit as b approaches infinity of um, 1 half x squared times the natural log of x minus 1 half minus 1 half. And again, I'm integrating this from 1 to b. So now I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that, and I get the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 half b squared times the natural log of b minus a half minus, now I'm going to substitute in for 1, and I get the natural log of 1 is 0, so I'm going to get uh, negative 1 fourth. What is this limit as b goes towards infinity of b squared over the net b squared times the natural log of b? Because essentially this becomes um, well when I multiply this, this gets really ugly here. <laughs> I get one half b squared natural log of b minus uh, one fourth b squared. Now I know what you're thinking, we just get infinity minus infinity. But if you recall, infinity minus infinity is, um, is indeterminate. So I need to find a way of making this so that it works for, um, for L'Hopital. And I, I, I'll show you that in class tomorrow, we're going to say that it diverges for now, but we can't just look at this and say that it diverges. Um, I think what we have to look at here is right here we have infinity times infinity. And infinity times infinity is infinity. But we can't look at it as infinity minus infinity because that's indeterminate and we'd have to put it in some form. But infinity times infinity is infinity and therefore it diverges. If you have questions about that, ask me tomorrow. Okay. One last one. Again, we're going from negative infinity to infinity and we're doing 1 plus x squared. Has anyone thought about what the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is? Well, let's go ahead and start writing it. We have the limit as b approaches negative infinity. So we're going to go from b, again, we're just going to separate that at 0, and have dx over 1 plus x squared plus the integral from as the limit as a goes to positive infinity from 0 to a of 1 over 1 plus x squared. And yes, all of these has dx. Forgive me for not writing the dx. Oh, I wrote it there. OK, so what is the inverse of 1 plus x squared? 1 over 1 plus x squared. You may recall that that is, anybody? Yeah, you're right, tangent inverse. So this is the tangent inverse of x evaluated from b to 0 plus the limit as a approaches positive infinity, tan inverse from 0 to a. Um, evaluating this, I get the limit as b approaches infinity, negative infinity, sorry, I lost my negative. I get um, tan inverse of 0 minus tan inverse b plus the limit as a approaches infinity of tan inverse a 
minus tan inverse zero. Let's start with the easy ones. <laughs> What's the tan inverse zero? So we have to remember that as what does tan inverse look like? Look like anyway. Tan inverse goes between it's um, asymptotic between pi over two and negative pi over two. So it looks like that. Okay? So the tan inverse of zero is zero. Oh, that's an easy one. The tan as it goes towards negative infinity, tan inverse goes towards negative pi over two. Once again, tan inverse of zero is zero. So the tan inverse of positive infinity as a goes towards positive infinity, we get pi over 2. So that negative negative becomes pi over 2, and that becomes 1. So this converges to 1. I think, is that the last one for today? Yep, that's the last one. So those are those four examples, and uh, we will do more examples um, tomorrow on different type of improper integrals. So have a good afternoon.